A little while ago, I published this video where I walked through using Angular 3, a library built by Chao Tran that is essentially a declarative Angular wrapper for 3.js. And I used this Angular library to build a sort of 3D labyrinth. The cool thing about Angular 3 that I pointed out in the video is that it allows you to build 3D scenes using modular Angular components. And you can utilize the features of Angular you're probably already familiar with, like injectables, signals, effects, and everything else. So by the end of that video, we had an example labyrinth being generated with a player and movement controls, gravity and physics, textures, and some other stuff. I wanted to take what we had there and turn it into more of an actual game, rather than just a simulator for walking around seemingly endless hallways. If you want a bit more of a general introduction to Angular 3, the first video is much more step by step. This one is going to be a bit more of a casual walkthrough of the changes I made to make this into more of an actual game, and a look at some of the more advanced things we could do. So the game we will have built by the end of this video is still very basic, but it does at least now have an objective, a win condition, and some sort of extra dimensional cube that hunts you down, or whatever you want to call whatever this thing is. And just a quick side note, I have published this game on Netlify, so if you want to have a play around with it, you'll find a link in the description. So the first change I made, or rather Chow made, is to incorporate these new NGTS pointer lock controls that can now just be dropped in from Angular 3 Sober, which is a sort of extension library with a bunch of different utilities for Angular 3. Sober also means three in Vietnamese, which is a nice little touch. So now instead of having to do all of this manual quaternion stuff to figure out the player direction and movement, I just get it for free. The next thing I did to start adding an objective to the game was to have the player find some things. The basic idea is that you would enter the dungeon, find the things, and then get out. So I added some helper functions for calculating where the dead ends are in the dungeon, which is where I will place the artifacts the player has to find, which are really just big red cubes, and I created this trigger component to serve two purposes. So basically this is just a sort of interactable item. When you collide with it, it will do something. In the case of where it is used as one of the artifacts, you'll just collect it when you interact with it. But I'm also using it as an invisible trigger component at the entrance so that when you enter the dungeon, it will seal the wall behind you. It won't open back up again until you find two artifacts. Whether the entrance is open or closed is controlled quite easily with signals and Angular's control flow to either render in the entrance wall or not. We can also use Angular's control flow to handle the logic of placing the trigger components at the ends of the labyrinth too. So with those changes we have sort of the basic idea of a game in place, but I wanted to add some extra pressure by having some sort of enemy that would hunt you down. So to start with, I just created a simple cube that would track the player's position in the labyrinth and move toward that. And I have ChatGPT to thank for the code for calculating those movements. If I make the walls somewhat transparent, you can see this little guy get to work hunting you down. It is somewhat creepy, but the little purple cube isn't overly threatening. So I figured I'd lean into AI a bit more here to create some kind of funky, creepy shader for me to apply to the box geometry. First, I ended up with this sort of gelatinous looking giant cube, but then I asked it to basically just mess around with the geometry in its vertex shader to create weird distortions, and it delivered spectacularly in my opinion. Now we have this sort of weird distorting, dimensional shifting kind of cube thing. And I've made it so that it moves slower when it has line of sight to you, which gives you the possibility of avoiding it somewhat, but once it has caught up to you, it's pretty hard to avoid. It does create this kind of cool effect where if it traps you in one of the dead ends, it will just move slower and slower before actually colliding with you, at which point the entrance is sealed and you're trapped in here forever with your new multi-dimensional friend. So this is a quick look at what some of the code ended up looking like. Uh, as you can see, Angular concepts are being heavily utilized here. I'll have a link to the repo in the description so you can check out the full code if you want. With the labyrinth size of 30 by 30, it is very hard to beat, but it is technically possible. With this version, I did manage to actually escape once, but I think I got pretty lucky. Of course, if you do manage to get out of the dungeon, drop a comment below. And if you enjoy this video, a like or subscribe before you go will be greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again next time.